ProTaper performance has been refined with ProTaper Next. The original variable tapered concept where the shapers cut dominantly in the coronal two-thirds and the finishers prepare the apical one-third has been enhanced. The original ProTaper features a convex triangular cross-section, whereas ProTaper Next introduces a patented rectangular offset cross-sectional design which significantly improves performance. Proven M-Wire Nitide technology provides greater resistance to cyclic fatigue while improving flexibility. Years of research and the accumulated experiences of ProTaper users the world over have gone into the development of ProTaper Next. Here is a closer look at the unique offset rectangular cross-section. Notice the mass of the file is offset from the center of rotation. Like a progressively tapered file, this feature serves to limit the engagement between the file and dentin. Over the active portion of the file, there is a limited contact at any given cross-section, as only two cutting points are engaged. Here you can see another aspect of the special design of the ProTaper Next instruments. Next provides a unique asymmetrical rotary motion. Follow the blue sine wave to see where the file is contacting the canal walls. And, just as importantly, where the file is not contacting the canal walls. Compared to a fixed tapered file with a centered cross section, the variable tapered and offset design of ProTaper Next minimizes the risk for taper lock and broken instruments. The ProTaper Next family of instruments is designed to work in sequence, where each file progressively and proportionally enlarges the canal towards the final desired shape. This is ProTaper Next. This is Dr. Cliff Ruddle. I would like to show you how to use the ProTaper Next instruments clinically. As with any endodontic procedure, it all starts with an accurate diagnosis. Diagnostics is comprised of gathering your clinical findings, performing the vital pulp testing, and of course, attaining one or more well-angulated films. When we look at this specific radiograph, notice the orientation of the prosthesis to the underlying roots. Importantly, notice the apical and furcal lesions and that the canals appear to be narrow, long, and quite curved. Let's get started. As we saw in the preoperative film, we had a difficult prosthesis, and so in this instance, we elected to go ahead and remove the bridge. I want to emphasize the importance of straight line access to each orifice. Certainly, the internal walls of any access cavity should be flared, flattened, and finished. This will encourage successfully completing each subsequent step of treatment. It's important to use a tin file to assure that there is sufficient working width to passively accommodate the end of the ProTaper SX file. This rapidly tapering file is used to remove triangles of dentin, relocate canals away from external root concavities, and produce more shape as desired. Here I am placing a viscous chelator, such as ProLube, Glide, or RC Prep. Let's talk just a little bit about glide path management. It's really important to secure canals. This means that any given canal is essentially empty and has a smooth, reproducible glide path before we ever entertain shaping canals with rotary files. In this instance, the canals are longer, narrower, and more curved and recurved so I chose to drop to an 08 file to reach length. Once you've got the 08, use gentle partial reciprocating motions to try to explore and discover the true pathway to the terminus. When you get a little catch with the 08 file, use gentle short amplitude strokes to begin to encourage canal widening. This will also serve to drag viscous chelator into the canal so that you have a smooth passive reproducible glide path. Once this instrument has achieved length, the canal is still pretty small in diameter, so it's oftentimes wise to transition from the 08 to the 10 file. And when this file is completely loose in the APIC 1 3rd, it's time to take a working film or use an electronic apex locator. Once we've established working length, 
it's important to verify patency. Patency means that the instrument is deliberately and intentionally inserted gently through the foramen and repeatedly done until the instrument is loose. Once the instrument is loose and we have working length and patency, we need to verify the glide path. The glide path is verified when a tin file can slip and slide easily and reproducibly over the apical one-third of the canal. Now that we've established working length, confirmed patency, and verified the glide path, I like to expand the canal using a dedicated mechanical glide path file like ProGlider. This progressively tapered single file expands the glide path more than all other dedicated mechanical glide path files available today. Once we have an expanded and reproducible glide path, we can commence shaping using the ProTaper Next X1 file. Notice its unique asymmetrical rotary motion. Appreciate that I'm brushing to improve contact between the instrument and the dentinal walls. Oftentimes when a file bogs down, it doesn't want to progress and move apically. Understand, a considerable amount of dentinal mud has been produced. So irrigate, recapitulate with a tin file, and then re-irrigate to liberate this debris. In one or more passes, we can continue with the X1 file using this brushing motion. Brushing allows us to effectively work into the eccentricities off the rounder parts of canals. Brushing allows us to create lateral space, which promotes the instrument's inward movement. When we've achieved length, as usual, irrigate. Notice the massive amount of debris that has been produced from the X1 file. Irrigate to eliminate this gross debris. Then use the tin file to break up radicular debris and move it into solution. Then re-irrigate to liberate this residual debris. We can now continue using the ProTaper Next X2 file. Train your chairside assistant to benefit the economy of time. From the lateral view, you can really see I'm emphasizing brushing. Brushing gives us more centered preparations. Brushing maximizes remaining dentin on the frication side, and it ensures that we're making more contact than just using a pecking or pumping motion. Recall, we mentioned earlier why ProTaper Next performs the way it does. Let's take a look. Notice in this cross section how using a brushing motion serves to improve the contact between the file and dentin. Together, increasing percentage tapers over the active portion of the file in conjunction with its asymmetrical rotary motion allows this instrument to selectively cut dentin in a precise region of the canal. Brushing makes working width which allows the bigger blades to passively move into the canal. Let's follow the file deeper into the canal. Notice because of its unique motion and its offset mass, there's a significant amount of available space to load debris and more effectively auger this debris out of the canal. We as dentists don't have the opportunity to take this little journey, but it's kind of a fun way to better appreciate what we're doing. Following the use of the X1 file, notice there's still an underprepared canal, meaning residual tags of tissue are left on the internal walls. Notice that as we shape with progressively tapered files, we shorten the overall length of the lateral canals. Subsequently, this will provide advantages when we talk about disinfection and clean root canal systems. When a file with an offset design initiates work, dentinal walls serve to initially constrain the mechanical wave of motion along the active portion of a rotating file. As the file continues to work and cut dentin, the transverse amplitude increases and ultimately has a peak deviation when the file becomes loose inside the shaped canal. This unique motion allows the file to cut evenly on the outer and inner walls of canal curvatures. This is an absolute breakthrough in canal preparation shaping techniques because it gives us more centered preparations. Once we've achieved length, the file can be carried to length a second and third time. Initially, the file is constrained by the surrounding dentinal walls. 
but as the file continues to cut dentin, the instrument expands, cutting its full envelope of motion. The finishing criteria for ProTaper Next is best determined by simply inspecting the apical flutes of the file. If the flutes are loaded with dentin, the shape is done. Alternatively, after removing the X2 file, the foramen may be gauged with a NITI 2502 hand file. If this 2502 file is snug at length, we're done. If the NITI 2502 is loose at length, like in the distal canal, then we go on to the X3 instrument. In larger canals, when we desire more shape, we proceed to the X3 file. Let the X3 float in and passively run towards resistance. Upon light resistance, begin to brush on the outstroke. Again, recognize brushing improves the contact between the file and dentin, but importantly, brushing allows the file to move towards length. Notice the debris over the active portion of the file. Irrigate, recapitulate, and re-irrigate. To determine if the shape is done, as earlier stated, either inspect the flutes of the file for dentinal mud or gauge the foramen with a nickel-titanium 3002 hand file. This finishing criteria assures we have met our shaping objectives in preparation for active irrigation. It's important to recall that files shape canals but irrigants clean root canal systems. So in preparation for three-dimensional disinfection, we can use our favorite final rinse solution in conjunction with the endoactivator. The endoactivator serves to exchange solution into the uninstrumentable portions of the root canal space. Here I'm using a size verifier that must match the last ProTaper Nix file that was carried to length. Mix the sealer of your choice and insert it into the orifices. Now we can use a gutta core operator. Coming out of the oven, there is sufficient thermal plasticity to allow it to easily slide to length. Once this operator has been carried to length, rock the handle gently back and forth to separate the coronal aspect from the radicular part. Fill the ML and distal systems using this exact same approach. Now flush out the tooth in preparation for provisionalization. I hope you've enjoyed watching this endodontic procedure that pretty much represents all the steps that comprise start to finish endodontics. To appreciate the postoperative result, let's review the preoperative film. Again, notice the bridge and the orientation of the underlying roots. Appreciate that the canals are long, narrow, and highly curved. Notice the furcal and apical lesions of endodontic origin. Notice in this particular instance, we've reprovisionalized the bridge, we have smooth flowing shapes, and we have filled multiple lateral and apical portals of exit. When we look at the post-op film, it reminds me of the old expression, the thrill of the film.